गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम अगेन टू क्लास नाइन कंप्यूटर एप्लीकेशन चैप्टर फोर डेट इज बेसिक्स ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम पार्ट टू इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वे हैव लर्न अबाउट वट इज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंड इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द सेम टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द नीड ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम and second we'll see the functions of operating system before starting these two topics let's discuss the goal of operating system the fundamental goal of a computer system is to execute user programs and to make the task easier various application programs along with the hardware systems are used to perform this work Operating system is a software which manages and control the entire set of resources and effectively utilize every part of a computer. Let's see this picture. In this uh, figure you can see this is a computer system that is a hardware. And over the hardware a operating system has been installed. Over this operating system there are various other applications are installed. including you can see a uh, compiler assembler text editor database etc and all these applications are being used by different users while working on the computer let's see the need of an operating system there are various reasons why we need operating system let's see one by one number 1 we need operating system because it recognizes and install peripherals devices peripheral means all external devices including printer scanner joystick external hard disk or any external device that we connect to the computer that are recognized and installed by the operating system this is the one reason number 2 it manages files and folders number 3 it shares out system memory that means it shares the system memory to different application and the hardware as per the requirement it handles system errors and alerts whenever the any errors occurs it handles it and provide appropriate alert to the user then it manages the system security it allows the software to communicate with the hardware and it also handles all the inputs and outputs so these are the major reasons why we need an operating system now let's discuss about the functions of an operating system operating system has some major functions the first function of operating system is process management and process management includes two things the first is the system process and number two is application process second function is the file system management third is memory management fourth security services and the next function is controlling hardware devices including input and output and these hardware devices include the three that is data storage devices media production and capture and network communication now we will discuss all the functions one by one in a brief let's see the first understand the process management that is one of the major function of the operating system this process management deals with the management of the cpu that is central processing unit operating system takes care of the allotment of the cpu time to the different processes process management helps the operating system to create and delete processes it also provides a mechanism for synchronization and communication among the processes now what is synchronization take an example of synchronization for example i am using my email id on a laptop i am just send a mail to somebody else and the same work that i have done over my laptop through my uh, email is being displayed over my mobile phone also this is called the synchronization and this synchronization of the data between the two devices or over the two network is being done 
through the operating system itself. In multiprocessing environment, the operating system decides which process gets the processor when and how much time. This function is called process scheduling. There are different process scheduling that is first come first serve, shortest job first. This way there are different process scheduling that you will learn in higher classes. An operating system does the following activities for process management. And what are those? Number one, number one, it keeps tracks of the processor and the status of process. The program responsible for this task is called the traffic controller. And number two, it allocates the processor that is the CPU to a particular process. Number three, it deallocates the processor when the process is no longer acquired. Now we move to the next function that is file system management. A file system management manages all the file related activities such as organization stories, retrieval, naming, sharing and protection of files. A file system is normally organized into directories that is folders for easy uh, navigation and uses and these directories may contain the files and other directories. An operating system does the following activities for file management. Number one, it keeps tracks of information, location, uses and status. The collective facilities are often known as file system. It decides who get the resources and it also allocates the resources that is memories. It also deallocates the resources. When we delete any file, it deallocates the resource. When we create any file, it allocates the resource. So this is a part, this is a function of file system management. Now we'll see the memory management. The memory management module performs the tasks of allocation and deallocation of the memory space to the programs in need of these resources. Memory management refers to the management of primary memory or main memory. Main memory is a large array of words or bytes where each word or a byte has its own address. Main memory provides a fast storage that can be accessed directly by the CPU for a program to be executed and it must be the main memory. Operating system does the following activities for memory management. Number one, it keeps the tracks of the primary memory that is what part of it are in use by whom and what part are not in use. Number two, the programming, the operating system decides which process will get memory when and how much. Number three, it allocates the memory when a process requests it to do so. And number four, it deallocates the memory when a process no longer needs it and has been terminated. These are the different tasks performed by operating system under memory management. Now we'll see device management. Device management keeps track of all the devices. This model is also responsible for task known as uh, IO controller that is input output controller. And it also performs the task allocation and deallocation of the devices. Allocation and deallocation means sometimes we disable any device or sometimes we enable any device. This disable and enable is done by the device management itself. An operating system manages device communication via their respective drivers. Device driver we have learned in the chapter 3 that is in the software. It does the following activities for the device management. Number one, it keeps tracks of all devices. Program responsible for this task is known as IO controller, that is input output controller. Number two, it decides which process gets the device when and for how much time. Number three, it allocates the device in an efficient way. And number four, it deallocates device. When we disable, it deallocates the device. 
Now there are some other important functions or important activities of operating system. Some of the important activities that an operating system performs are number one security. By means of password and uh, similar other techniques, that is authorization and authentication, it prevents unauthorized access of the programs and data. Second, so over the system performance, that is recording delay between request for the service and the response from the system. That is, for example, I have I am trying to open a file. How much time it takes to open the file that depends upon the system performance. Operating system controls the system performance. Number three, that is job accounting. Job accounting means keeping track of the time and the resources used by the various jobs and the users. That is called accounting. Next is error detecting errors. Error detecting errors means there are some certain tools that are responsible for production of dumps, traces and error messages and other debugging and error detecting ads. Next is networking. In a distributed system, a group of processes which do not share memory, hardware devices or a clock, the processor communicate with one another through the network. And in such case, operating system plays an important role to establish communication between the processor working in a distributed system. Next is coordination between the other programs and users. That is coordination and assignment of compilers, interpreters, assemblers and other softwares to the various users of the computer system. These are the important functions of operating system. Now, when we summarize all the important functions and activities, we get an idea that operating system performs process management, memory management, file management, device management, securities, then job accounting, secondary storage management, then networking and coordination between the other softwares and users. So in this video, we have learned two important things about the operating system that is a need of operating system and the functions of operating system so in next video i will start types of operating system till then please go through the video and while watching the video please prepare your notes also that will help during the test and exam so till then stay home stay safe thank you